you're watching an episode of Shiftcast. You can catch the full episode on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. All right, let's move in to the off-season roundup. We're going to start doing this on everyone. You know, Shift, we are the off-season hub for Rocket League Esports. So we're just going to check in, give our thoughts about some of the bigger moments. First one we want to talk about, this is something that happened a while back. We just didn't get to it. Mist has been uh, released, benched, will not be playing with the main NRG roster going forward. Boys, what do we think? What do we think the, uh, the outlook's like for, for both NRG and for Mist? I mean, NRG, NRG the org? Like the team. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the team. Garrett and Aqua are still okay. on, the, on the main roster. Um, what is there to say about NRG in the year of our Lord 2024? Uh, it is not the team it once was. That's for it's sure. Not. You guys ever seen that meme where it's like, he thought he, the, par the party ended an hour ago and he's still there. And it's that <laughs> dude like dancing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I feel about NRG. And listen, I respect that it seems like they're finally committing to rebuilding around youth, right? They stuck with Aqua, who's you know always had a lot of potential. It seems as we able to put it together. Now they're letting go their best player. Assumingly, they'll pick up another young player. I, if yeah. they go and pick up like some mid-tier twenty-three-year-old, no offense. Uh, it's 23 year olds in the mid tier. Jeez, like, it just doesn't make uh, any sense, right? So, um, for Mist, it, I think it's great. I think Mist still has a lot to give. I think he can get on a team, an OG level team, I would say, uh, a, a, a SR level team in that lower half of land qualification and make it. But, you know. Yeah, I mean, Mist should still be. Exactly. Like you said, Mist should still be at that level. Like, getting dropped from energy is not doesn't mean he shouldn't be at a team even better than NRG uh, was uh, last split or, or last few splits. Um, I'm going to tap the sign nice and early into the segment. <laughs> I'm going to tap the sign that says... Love it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. That says that roster moves in Rocket League usually don't have anything to do with the gameplay aspect and not from in-game issues, but usually have to do with out-of-the-game experiences, connections, you know, mm -hmm. how they how they play together, the synergy within the team, what they want from the game, what they want from each other, how scrims are, are going, how communication is running, everything that goes on outside of the game. And um, when you see Mist getting dropped from NRG, that, that doesn't really tell you anything about Mist's potential in the next year. You know, he yeah. can get back in there, grind his way to the top. There, there's no doubt about it in my yeah, mind. Yeah, the talent's undeniable with him. He's he's He was at the top of NA for how long? Three years? Three and a half years? Yeah. Made a major uh, final. That's, yeah. So, I mean, the best of luck to him. I'm excited. I want to see him on a great team again. I still believe he has a lot to give. Um, Another big news across the pond, uh, the KDOP Chaussette experiment continues. It's now been two <laughs> years since they the duo formed with Fairy Peak. Um, and they've gone through three thirds. They've gone through Fairy, uh, sorry, yeah, they stood Fairy, Fairy Peak, Peak for a year. Then they had Reese Fox for a split and they brought in Astral, kind of a different like vibe on each one. It was like, first we're going to bring all the old guys together. Then it was like, we're going to try a new guy. And then it's like, best player available. Um, so yeah. Astral's been released. Astral is in a weird spot. I think you at guys this agree. point, I'm not yeah. tapping that sign. I am slamming that sign. <laughs> well, I think you know. Listen, let me let me play devil's advocate. I think if there was ever a time where ever, where Astral and the team he was for was just like, hey guys, I feel like we're going in different directions. Let's mutually part ways. It's this one, right? Um, but he's in a weird spot because everybody knows he's so good. Everybody feels like he's this like still a really really solid player but everything else makes nobody want to team with him it seems like um so what do you guys think where where where, where does he go next uh because really, it feels like a lot of he's I on really no fly know. list for a lot of orgs i feel yeah. like you i mean it's obviously a very different scenario for him but i feel like you got to do what a lot of the like older players that kind of end up in a similar situation you just got to find some young upcoming talent Right. Some players that just haven't had haven't had the opportunity to land on an org, and there's lots of it in Europe. 
You know, there's plenty yeah. of it. I think there's a, a slew of of kind of tier two, tier three level pros that have the mechanics and they have the ability. And so if if you know if they can get on a team and work hard and 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 actually game plan and you know figure out a, a strategy that works for the tools that they may have on that team, Astral's still capable of hmm. competing with. Uh, you know, I would say at least top eight in Europe. Yeah. You know where I think you should go? Where? Sa. So, because I remember watching Astral dominate Carmen Corp in an upset. They All they know how to do is beat Carmen Corp. Let's fuse them together. It's got to start working against other teams at some point, right? Cool. Um, yeah. I, I like think most cards, people so. are wondering what Solary are actually doing. Like from, mm -hmm. from the organization's perspective. Content farming. Because <laughs> yes, they have they yeah. have the content creators, they have the dub. Mm -hmm. The dub. But you know, at, at some point, Solary right now, or actually ever in Rocket League, if you're just a Rocket League fan and you look at Solary, they just seem like a smaller French organization, right? They don't mm -hmm. fit in with the other French teams. They're they have you know, the big names, the veterans, but they're not competing for the, the top spots. And that's just a Rocket League perspective, because if you look across the esports landscape, Solary are a very solid French organization with a with a, a, a fan base that doesn't really, you know, that, that can actually compete with the other French fan bases. Yeah. So it, it is a little weird to see them cling to the content creators and not go maybe Astral's way or maybe, you know, some other young talent, uh, getting them on the roster and and seeing how they can really reform what they've been doing within Rocket League because uh, who are they getting alongside Josette and, and Kadop? Like, it can't really get much better than what they've done with Resfox and Astral, I, I'd say. At, at least, if you're if you're one of the better players in EU and you're still looking for a team, right? Are you going to team with them? I don't think so. I, so I think. What are they going to do? I think some players would would think about it just because it would boost their brand and get them on a lot of screens, and that could help them jump their career up. I think that's what Reese Fox thought it was going to do, and it just didn't. Well, yes. He was not and I don't think it was a bad move for him. I'm just saying that at this point, is dropping Astro like just you know saving out on some salary for a salary because well, are they really going to think they can improve from here i don't see it i don't yeah yeah i don't know i think like the only name i can really come up with french player name i think i was like maybe sizen like is he still kicking yeah but like that's not gonna yeah, that's yeah, yeah. not moving the he made one regional he made less regional than solar he did this year so who knows i don't know it's weird you know what's even weirder cloud nine what is kicking mm. zanil mm. This one, this one, this, yeah, and you might need to get a new sign because this, the, the sign has been broken on this one. <laughs> this one makes no <laughs> sense hard. coming on the field, on the field uh, thing because he was phenomenal for them and they, and they were quite good. They made a, a top four and they were, they were one game away from beating G2 and making a yeah. regional final yeah. uh, in that, in that first open qualifier. So um, I don't know if the, I don't think a, a third has been announced. I'm sure you can, if you go look at Star GG or something, you can find it on this, on the Shift Summer League, but I haven't gone and looked. Um, but yeah, what... So Zanil's, I think, an interesting one. I actually think Zanil's going to get quite a bit of... Like, he's going to get a lot of offers and a lot of tryouts. I, I kind of think this might be better for his career. I think he can do better than the teammates he had. No offense to them. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree, I think. I agree, I think... Um... Cloud9 is a good team. I think it's a team that's like a, it feels like a safe bet. Like you're probably mm -hmm. not going to punch up into the top four. You're probably not going to be consistently trying to make majors, but you probably will be fighting for it consistently. Yeah. Um, but Zanil is just such a unique case because I feel if you rewind back to when he decided to go Dark Zero instead of. Hi was he part of Pirates on a Boat? I can't remember the other option. I can't remember what it I'm was. Not, I'm not sure. It was, so, it, it, in, in my opinion, it was a better option. I, I wish I could remember what it was. But he decided to go Dark Zero, which was, I think, Turbo and ZPS creams. or Creams. It was initially, yeah, I think it was Creams because they dropped J-PAL, I want to say. Right. 
I'm gonna uh, I wish I could remember. Or maybe exactly they dropped the both. Other... Hold on. I wish I could remember what the other option was, but but my point is, I, I feel like Zanil has kind of been labeled this upcoming talent, like next up esque player, but it's been like two and a half years of him sitting right there, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, I don't know what to think. I don't know if, if maybe you know maybe he's a player that is kind of difficult to play around. Um, you know, maybe we hit the sign. Maybe it's something that's like difficult to get along with. I have no um, clue in this case. I have no clue yeah. either. And and I can tell you my my personal experience with Anil is wonderful. He is so kind and so nice and very easy to talk yeah. to. And I've, you know, seen that with, I mean, he's been very friendly with other pros as well. And I, I think what I gather yeah, is Yeah, there was that a bit of a... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. I just, I, well, I was going to say, what I gather from interactions is that he is seemingly easy to get along with. And I, I think if you look at those replies to to you guys report... Yeah. There's lots of people that are confused by it. So yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes it feels like the team or the organization or both wanted to make a move, right? And then who? Then it's not very clear who you're actually going to replace. And in this case, it was Sinil. It feels like that was more of, of the case here. Also, yeah, Lion Blaze and Percy. Lion Blaze and Percy have have been have like a really extensive history together. As a team. oh, do they? Like they played under they played under M80 together. Um, right. They played under Luminosity together, uh, so yeah. I mean, they're they've always been. And a duo. for your information, they have signed up with Kinsey for uh, the Shift Summer League. So it's uh, Kinsey. That was their old. That Percy was the MAD team, right? So that they're going the... back to to Kinsey, hey, which let me, in terms let me ask of... you guys. Let me ask you guys this, and and the same question for Mist as well. Is there a world where these players are requesting? To leave, I think in this case, it, I could it, see it if he's maybe happen. not requesting, but he was like, "Hey guys, I feel like you guys want to go young. I would like to get on a team that is more on the timeline with me. No hard feelings. Like, like I love being here." Miss clearly wanted to play with Garrett at one point in his career. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think there's many other players that have a play style that worked as well for NRG of making main events. Because there was a lot of teams worse than NRG that that missed main events, and missed specifically, I think, was instrumental in making sure they made every main event. So yeah. he was their best player. I think maybe that Zanil, all of these players, it's untouched territory for them to start making right. top eights, top fours all the time. Yeah. Well, it, right? I can I can say it wasn't the case for Zanil, and I'm not sure about Mist. It might be. I feel like Mist is in a place after such a career already that he might be the one telling the team that he wants to go somewhere else but usually that means you've already got something lined up all right sure. yeah so i'm but also not like, sure if that's the he, case he for might have, it might have been mutual like they would have been right, right, maybe right. nrg was it's like a, we want to go that young happens too yeah yeah right. miss was like i don't want to be here or not i want to be here but i want to go try to compete to contend <laughs> i'm right? sick of you but, guys yeah and by the way nrg <laughs> signed up with kofer as there ah so they, they have uh, gone young They've gone. For the they've shift gone. Oh, so it's you know, what Miss, you know what Miss Garage, is? Aqua, and Kofri. Has Miss signed up with the team yet? Um, I'd have to look. I can't yeah, see it right now. Um, well, it would be interesting to see what he, where he signs up with. I'm sure he'll compete. Um, but yeah, I mean, was I the the Lion Blaze Kinsey Percy thing makes no sense to me because they've tried this roster over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And it's never worked at like the highest level. They've been like a main event team. And as an org, why why would I pay you money if I know where your ceiling is and well, that's not a, where I want to be? It just doesn't make sense. I, I agree it doesn't make sense. And that makes me lean towards like maybe maybe a mutual thing and the yeah. C9 team is is hopeful for something different, but couldn't work it out for this first event. Uh, you know, so they just go with with something that they know. Maybe Zanil was hopeful to try something new. I mean, the the reality is obviously we don't know all the context and uh, what's going on behind the scenes and yeah. how much the org had at play or how much the players are, you know, agreeing and wanting to go separate ways or or maybe uh, or maybe like the sign, you know, maybe having issues <laughs> with with, with should we get style. a sign? Should we, we should have, actually we should have a graphic make a sign? Made. Yeah. We should have a graphic made. That whenever we do this segment, it just like yeah. plops to the front of the screen. We should have Jens like put it on his like. We should get a physical sign and have Jens put it on his. Like, <laughs> he just brings it in. I, I have a whiteboard yeah. probably somewhere. That's okay. funny. That that yeah. would be fantastic. We'll, we'll or, go or one of those boys. one of those cards. Um, yeah, that would cards. be really good. Thank you for watching this segment of the Shiftcast again. You can catch the full episode 
here on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Thank you for watching.